Hello everyone, welcome back. I am ready to pick some more books, so let's see what we get. I need to pick a new fiction and a new non-fiction, so we will dig them out of my jar. And as I've said many times before, the blue ones are all non-fiction. Uh, the other ones are all fiction of various genres. So I'm going to pick a non-fiction and pick a fiction out of here. And we'll start a new reading adventure. So let's shake it up nice. See what I get. Last time I had a few... DN or a couple DNFs and some uh, a couple DNFs and some unhauls, so we'll see what I get this time. Okay. Cat Crimes for the Holidays, a short story book. Alright. That's a fiction one. Let's find a non-fiction. That's not gotta find a blue one. There's a, oh, here's a blue one. What is this one? Ooh, Haunted New Orleans by Troy Taylor. All right, so I'm going to go find those and I will be right back. Okay, so here are the two books. So this one is called Cat Crimes for the Holidays. So celebrate the holidays with family and felines. 19 original tail twitching tales of mystery. So it's basically a book of short stories uh, involving cats. I have these other cat crimes ones too that are all uh, little, they're short stories of cats solving mysteries, which if anybody who knows me knows that some of my favorite cozy mysteries are involve cats. So. And then Haunted New Orleans, History and Hauntings of the Crescent City. This one is by Troy Taylor, who uh, he does the American Hauntings podcast that I really, really enjoy. So this one should be super interesting and because I really like their New Orleans season on the podcast. So we will read that and we will read this one and I will let you know how that goes. update for you guys. I have now read the first, well, the in introduction to this book, which was the first uh, 30 pages, and I'm quite enjoying it so far. Uh, the first uh, section is the introduction, which basically, basically goes through the history of New Orleans, how it was created. We're going to be getting into some of the hauntings and, and more individual stories, so I'm really looking forward to that. It's very good so far. I like his writing style. I've always liked his podcast. He does the, uh, on the American Hauntings podcast, he does the actual writing of the um, of the stories and then they discuss them afterwards. And I've always liked his storytelling style. So he's a very good storyteller. And so then I read the first two stories in this one. There's 19 stories in it. And so far... The first two stories were good. Uh, the first one was, you know, really short and, you know, not a whole lot happened. And then the second story was um, a Midnight Louie story. And that's one of the cat 
mystery series that I used to read and it was quite humorous. So I think what I'm going to do with this one as I go through it is I'm going to rate each story out of five. It's not going to be as in-depth as my Copile ratings, but I'll just kind of rate each story out of five as to how I, whether I liked it or, or not and how I felt about it. And then at the end, I'll kind of tell you what my favorite ones were. So the first story, which was... Uh, Dr. Couch Saves a Cat by Nancy Pickard. I would give that one probably three stars. It was just kind of an average, you know, regular story. Nothing too exciting in that one. And then the other, the second one was the Midnight Louie one by Carol Nelson Douglas. It was La 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 Kathlui, <laughs> a Midnight Louie adventure. And that one I would uh, probably give four and a half stars. It was quite, it was quite fun. Uh, I just want to make sure I leave my five stars for something that really blows me away. So I would put that at four and a half stars. So, so far that's my favorite one and I'm going to keep reading those as well. Uh, the audiobook that I was reading, the BTS Beyond, Beyond the Story, I'm still at 66%. I haven't listened to any more of that one because I've been doing things that I wouldn't let me uh, listen to an audiobook. So I'm hoping to do that tomorrow when I work on cleaning my craft room. And I have been reading Watership Down, which is the one that I'm reading for my BTS book challenge for February, which was a book that gives you all the feels. And I am now on to chapter 10, which is page 38. And of course, I am loving it. Uh, this book has been one of my favorite books since high school, which was like 20 some years ago, 20 some, let's see, 25, 26, 27 ish. <laughs> anyway, years ago <clears throat> when my hair was brown. Um, <laughs> and that's when I first read it. And I've read it lots of times since then. I just love this book so much. And getting back into it, I hadn't read it for a couple of years and picking it up and opening it to the first page and reading like the first line. And I it was like sitting up, curling up in a nice, comfy chair with old friends. You know, I was right back in that world with those characters that I love so much. So I'm really, really enjoying that. And I'm sure I'll get through it quite quickly because, you know, it's one of my all-time favorite books. So uh, basically, I guess I should tell you what it's about. Uh, so in this one, it's about these rabbits. It's in England and they live in, they're wild rabbits and they live in this warren. And one of them's name is... Fiverr and he has premonitions. He's a small rabbit and not, you know, not one of the, you know, top rabbits in the warren or whatever, but he has premonitions of, of things and, and he lives with his brother Hazel, who is a, a bit of a, of a bigger rabbit and everything, but still they're, they're outskirters. So they're kind of on the outskirts of the warren and they'll probably have to move off eventually, but they, uh, they're out one night and and Fiverr has a premonition that something very terrible is going to happen to their warren and there's a a uh, uh, a man-made sign that's been put up out near where it is but of course they can't read the sign but Fiverr has this terrible premonition that something bad is going to happen so after talking to the chief rabbit they who doesn't listen to them at all they go around and start finding some of their friends who want to escape with them because Fiverr is telling Hazel that we need to get out of here we need to get out of here we need to get out of here so they gather up a little group of rabbits and they take off on an adventure to go and find their own place and so where I'm at now they've they've just been out for a day and and they're uh, they've already run into a little bit of trouble and uh yeah, but it's it's so good. The characters are so good. I just love all the characters in these books. Uh, my favorite characters are, of course, Hazel and Fiverr are two of my favorites. And then I like Bigwig. He's one of the big rabbits who was part of, they call it the Osla, which was their, the, uh, uh, like, kind of like the rabbit police or whatever almost. And uh, he uh, he's a big rabbit and everything, but he's just, I like his character. He's, he's quite a fun character. And uh, yeah, but they're all, they all have unique little bits and pieces that I love. So anyways, that's where I'm at with that. And I will update you guys when I get a little further.
it's been a little while, so I probably should give you guys an update on my reading. This month so far has been going quite a bit slower, uh, but it's still going. I did finish uh, the BTS book, the audiobook I was listening to, and of course I gave it five stars again. I had read the physical book last year and really enjoyed it. And so, yeah, I gave that one five stars, and it's excellent, and I think everybody should read it. The audiobook was actually pretty good. I I preferred reading the physical book because being that I I am a fan and I know the guy's uh, voices, and I liked being able to hear their words kind of in my head in their voices, but the guy who did the audiobook actually did really well. He was very easy to listen to and everything, so that one I would recommend. I also started uh, listening to the audiobook of Ready Player One, which I've read the physical book again. That's by Ernest Klein. I've read the physical book in the past. I'm at 43% in the audiobook now. And it's uh, narrated by Will Wheaton, and he's got the perfect voice for it. It is, uh, it's quite a good listen right now. And I'm at 43%. I'm kind of binge listening to it right now because it's due back at the library tomorrow, I think. So I'm hoping that I can get it done today. I've still got quite a few hours, though, so I don't know. If I don't finish it this time, I can either f finish reading the physical book again because I do have it, or I did put it on hold again so I could finish it off. I kind of wanted to finish listening to it read by Will Wheaton. So we'll see how that goes. Uh, I'm enjoying it like usual. Um, so I'll tell you what it's about. Ready Player One. Basically, it's a futuristic world where the uh, they've, you know, hit the energy crisis and basically the world has gone to pot and the uh, there's a virtual reality world that was created that everybody lives in and, you know, does all their, a lot of the work jobs and things like that are in this virtual reality world, school, all that kind of stuff. And the guy who created the virtual reality world, who grew up in the 1980s, he just recently passed away. And in his will, he created a, an Easter egg somewhere in this virtual reality world. That And there's riddles in order to find the keys to get to this, this uh, egg, this Easter egg. And whoever finds it first gets access to the Oasis, which is the the online world and uh, his fortune. So the main character is this high school student named Wade and he's been hunting for this egg as a kind of an obsession and basically it's brought back like this obsession with the 1980s because that's what the uh, the founder was into. He loved the 1980s and old video games and movies. So in order to find where this stuff is located you have to know that know that history and everything and and be into it and so it's really fun that way um as somebody who grew up in the 80s a lot of the stuff i remember and he's searching for this egg and but then there's also this big corporation who's also searching for it because they want to take over the oasis and you know charge people for it and you know, basically destroy it sort of thing so that's that's how the story goes and it's really interesting so far especially if you like the 1980s uh, or if you grew up in the 1980s, a lot of the movies and books and TV shows and stuff is, is in there and video games and it's, it's quite fun. Uh, so I'm reading that one and then I am quite a ways into Watership Down. I am on chapter, well, let's see, where am I? On page 144 anyway. And of course, I love this book. It's really good. The, the, uh, rabbits have, you know, gotten to to their new location and so they're trying to trying to you know set up set up their new uh, uh, living space and and you know facing all the dangers and it's so funny because this book is about rabbits doing all this stuff but they're such good characters I just love the characters and it's written in a way where there's lots of danger and intrigue and you know all that kind of thing so it's definitely a, a very popular or very good book and I am in the Cat Crimes for the Holidays one, which is one of the ones for my read it or unhaul it. I am getting about halfway now. I'm on page 193 and I have read, let's see, I've been marking down the stories here. I've read 11 of the 19 stories and so far I've given 
two of them five stars. I've had a couple that I only gave two stars to, uh, quite a few four star ones, that kind of thing. The, I find it, um, short stories are so touch and go for me. They're so hard to, to, because you got to be able to tell a good story in a short period of time. And sometimes I find that, that the plot is too big for the short story. Sometimes I find that the characters are unlikable. Um, the ones, the stories that I like the most so far, like they're, they're, these are all kind of mysteries involving cats in some way or another. And the stories that I liked so far the most were ones where the cat was kind of a clue in the mystery uh, versus there were a couple where the cat was the victim and those ones I hated because, I mean, like cat lovers don't read these kind of books to read about cats being killed. So I don't know why people would write stories like that for these books. So there was two of them like that, I think, that were, or well, well, one of them that was like that and then another one that uh, where it was part of the story that a that cat had been injured anyway. And, but I mean, it's, it's kind of one of those things where it's like, you know, I'm a cat lover. I don't want to read about cats getting murdered or anything like that. So anyway, <laughs> but yeah, I've given two stories, five stars so far. Uh, it's, it's a, a decent collection. I don't know if I'll ever read it a second time, but we'll, uh, or though even those couple of stories that I liked. I don't know if I would, if I'd like them enough to actually read it a second time, but we'll keep going on that. I'm almost through that one. And then Haunted New Orleans. I am now, this is the other one for my read it challenge. I'm on chapter six, which is page 71. And I'm finding this one still very interesting. I like the way he combines the history with the hauntings. It's I, I love reading history books, as you might have guessed from my channel, but I also find the hauntings intriguing and I like the way he mixes the two together in this book. So it's, yeah, very interesting. I found the last chapter where he was talking about the cemeteries of New Orleans really, really interesting. Like there was one part here uh, where he's, it was just kind of some creepy stuff. I hear he's talking about the challenges that they faced, that they face with having cemeteries in locations that are so wet like New Orleans and and what why a lot of people are buried above ground but he says here that um, above ground was normally the the rule uh, because the wet ground of Louisiana caused the graves to fill with water and then here he says the coffins would often float to the surface despite grave diggers placing heavy stones or bricks on the lids such conditions made funerals a somewhat terrifying affair caskets were often lowered into gurgling pools of water and oozing mud and often as not the coffin would capsize as the water began to leak in causing newly buried and half decomposed cadavers to float to the surface of the grave to the horror of those attending the funeral of course <laughs> i can't even imagine oh yeah i can't even imagine and then there was another one here where they were talking about um uh, yeah, he's talking about the Protestant section of the cemetery uh, that came. Uh, it was basically created uh, after the Americans started to come into Louisiana. And he says, this section is noticeably different from the Catholic tombs and the rest of the cemetery. The newly arrived Protestant Americans were not prone to above ground burials, so they interred the bodies of the dead beneath the ground, even though the section is obviously below sea level. Because of this, you can see the double layers of brick and large slabs that have been designed to hold the waterlogged coffins below the surface. Legend has it that in the 1800s, visitors to this section of the cemetery often reported the sounds of the coffins knocking and thumping against the tops of the below ground tombs. I can't even imagine that would terrify me. <laughs> and I mean, I know it's just a coffin and the fact that it's wet there, but that would freak me right out if I, there was knocking on the tomb in the tombs at the cemetery. Anyway, so I'm, I am finding that one super interesting. Lots of good history, lots of good hauntings. So that one is also very interesting. So I'm going to keep reading those. Right now, like I say, I'm binge listening to the audiobook because I have to take it back uh, or I have to return it uh, tomorrow. So hopefully I can get that done and then I will keep on reading these other ones. Here's the chapter of the usual. Let's go here. Let's find your new. Oh, yes. Here we go. Oh, here we are. 
Yes, we understand you. My name is Boxwood. Where do you come from? From the hills. My friends and I live as we please. Without men, we eat the grass, lie in the sun, and sleep underground. How many are you? Four. Bucks and does. Do you ever come out? Yes, sometimes a child takes us out and puts us in a pen on the grass. We want to. We have come to tell you about my warren. We need more rabbits, and we want you to run away from the farm and join them. Hmm? Hmm. Run away from the farm and join them? I don't think so. You're a plush indoor cat, or a diamond bunny. Aren't you? Okay. There's a wire door at the back of this hutch, said Boxwood. Come down there, we can talk more easily. The door was made of wire netting on a wooden frame, with two leather hinges nailed to the uprights and a hasp and staple fastened with a twist of wire. Four rabbits were crowded against the wire, pressing their noses through the mesh. Two, Laurel and Clover, were short-haired black in chorus. The other, Boxwood and his doe Haystack, were black and white Himalayans. Time for my final update for this vlog. It has taken me quite a while. I've been going through a little bit of a, I don't know if I'd call it a reading slump, but more of a just not having as much time. I've been, one of the reasons why it's taken me so long to re, to finish any books in March is because I've actually finally been writing again, which is a good thing. I have written four novels that are published. There, I'll put uh, a picture of them up here and I'll put, there's always links down in the description to my novels. I've written a series called Dust and Devils. The first one's Dust and Devils. Second one is Sin and Salvation. Third one is Ghosts and Grifters. And the fourth one is Blood and Boxcars. And there's going to be six to complete the series. And I finally completed my first draft of the fifth one. I've been going through a major writer's block ever since 2020 when everything went downhill and I had an injury that was affecting my ability to type because I had I actually ruptured my bicep tendon in my arm at my work that I was doing and so I couldn't properly type or anything so it was quite the uh, recovery on that it was eight month recovery at least and before I could actually properly type again and turn my wrists properly to type and so and of course with the pandemic and all that other fun stuff not going on i ended up not doing any writing and so then i got into a huge bout of writer's block that ended up lasting me until this year but i finally was able to write again and so i finished i had had the first the first draft of my fifth novel like I'd say three quarters finished for that whole time and I finally got it finished. So I've been doing a lot of writing and then now revising because I'm going through it one more time before I send it to my friend who uh, goes through it and is my first reader and editor. So that's what's been keeping me busy but um, to tell you a little bit about my books I've got the four in the series so far and they follow the trail of a young man named Jake and he is, it's set in the 1930s in Canada. He's riding the rails looking for work after he gets kicked off the farm that he grew up on. And he decides to go looking for his father that he never knew. And that leads him into all kinds of trouble. And various other things happen in the series. He comes across other people. It's kind of a found family story. And it also is adventure and a lot of stuff like that so if you want to read them they're available on amazon and the links are down in the description and i would love it if you read them and gave me some reviews as my goodreads reviews for them are not very high right now i, I mean the reviews are high there are a lot of them are four or five stars but i only have a very few number of them there's uh, not a lot of reviews on there yet so i would love extra reviews so people can see it and yeah anyways that's all i'll do for plugging my book but books but I just wanted to let you guys know about them because that's what's kept me from doing so much reading and so I haven't been vlogging as much but I did finally finish both these books that I had pulled out of my jar so let's talk about this one first so this was the non or this was the fiction uh, cat crimes for the holidays and this was a whole bunch of short stories written by mostly mystery authors Basically, somewhere in each story, a cat was somehow involved. 
So I'm not real big on short stories. I've, I want to learn how to write short stories better because my plots are always too big for, uh, for short stories. They're always novel length plots. And so I thought, you know, reading more short stories would be helpful to me. And I have quite a few on my shelf up there that I'm hoping I'll eventually pull out of the, out of the jar. And I want to read a lot of short stories at, over the next little while and basically get to where I kind of get a feel for what makes a good short story plot and everything. So these ones here, there was 19 short stories in here and I found it uh, quite a mixed bag as to what I liked and what I didn't. The overall, when I averaged, basically what I did to rate these is each story I rated it one through five uh, with three being kind of the middle ground. So it wasn't like, it didn't blow me away and it wasn't, you know, it wasn't like, wow, that's awesome. So much as it was kind of like, meh, you know, it was okay. And then four was, I really liked it. Five was, okay, that was really good. And then two was, I didn't really like it. And one was, I really disliked it. And I'm happy to say that there was, I had two five stars and two four and a half stars. And then uh, I only had one, one, one star. I had uh, a couple of two stars as well, but I only had one, one star. So that was good. So uh, on average, the average over the 19 stories ended up being three and a half stars. So, you know, it's kind of, you know, middle of the road. The only thing that I'll say, um, the, the stories that I really liked that were, um, that I gave the most positive reviews to were ones that were kind of like an actual mystery, but it wasn't, it wasn't like so huge a plot that it, that it you know didn't have room to develop so that was um that was good um the one story that i gave five stars to was called longevity has its place and it was an interesting one it was a basically an old guy in uh in the um, old folks home telling a story to his friends about the time that he met martin martin luther king jr and they and he kind of uh, Martin Luther King Jr. helped him and these other people solve this mystery involving this cat. And it was quite, it was quite a fun little bit of a um, solving a puzzle type story. And so that was kind of cool. I like those ones that were, it's a little puzzle that has to be solved. Uh, the other one that I gave five stars to was called, I suppose this makes me Sancho. And that was, uh, I'm just trying to remember what that one was about. Um, oh yes. Um, the, the reason why it was called that is because the uh, the cat's name was Quixote. So, and Sancho was the guy who helped Don Quixote in the classic novel. So, um, but that one was quite an interesting story. It was about a veteran and and it was a really cool story. I, I really liked that one. I also really enjoyed one called um, uh, Autumn Tethers. That one actually of all the stories in the book that one was the one that actually made me cry I may have just been over emotional that day I get that way sometimes thanks to menopause but um <laughs> but just the characters the one was a was again a war vet and then there was a young boy who was troubled and uh and he was helping this this war vet and and the war vet's cat and it was it was a very interesting story it really held me in there and and i I found the characters in that one were probably some of the best characters. The other one I gave four and a half stars was called La 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 Cthulhu, and that one was a funny one. Um, I've in the past I read a lot of uh, the Midnight Louis cat mysteries by Carol Nelson Douglas, and that was a Midnight Louis short story. And Midnight Louis is a big black cat from Vegas who solves mysteries, and so it was quite a fun story. The one I only gave one star to, uh, that one was called Cold Turkey. And that one leads me to a little complaint that I have about this type of books. So cat crimes for the holidays and all these other cat crime books that I have. Speaking of cats, come here, buddy. Can you do this with me? Raven. Okay, you help me you help me talk to everybody, Raven. So when you're reading the people the market for these type of books is cat lovers and pet lovers. So why? why would you put in a story where the cat is a murder victim like that just 
made me so mad. It turned me right off. Like if, if you've got a story where like, for example, in the autumn tethers one, something bad happens, but he, the, the main character, the kid is able to rescue the guy and his cat, you know? And so that's, that's fine. I don't have a problem with that. That was a really good story. But when you're telling a story and the premise of your murder is that this cat gets killed and then this other person it's like why would you put that in a in a book for cat lovers cat lovers are not going to want to read about the cat getting killed like really okay so that was my rant on that one i really disliked that story because of that but overall like i say it was a three and a half stars it was it was okay there was a few good stories a lot of just kind of average stories so then I also read Haunted New Orleans by Troy Taylor. And this one I ended up giving five stars to, or I think it was four and a half stars. So I rounded it up to five for Goodreads. And um, I'm a big fan of the American Hauntings podcast. Hi, Raven. Are you staring at me? I'm a big fan of the American Hauntings podcast. I've listened to pretty much every episode of it from the beginning. And so, and it's, uh, the stories in it are told by Troy Taylor. And so that's where I got the idea to get some of his books for Laura for Christmas as my sister. And so that's why this one ended up on our shelves. And this was the first one that I had read. And I just have to say he is a very good storyteller. It was interesting. I liked the way he weaved the history in with the, uh, in with the, um, in with the hauntings and everything. Uh, a lot of the stories I had heard before because he did do them in his Haunted New Orleans uh, season of the podcast, but it was still fun to read them and read the details and, and go through them again. So I would definitely recommend these books. They're, they're quite interesting. I do have two other ones of his that I got for Laura for Christmas that year as well. So I'm looking forward to reading them. And I definitely, uh, like I say, he's a very good storyteller. And if you want to listen to the podcast too, it's called Haunt, uh, American Hauntings. And it's, he tells the, the first half of it is him telling the story uh, of some history or haunting in the U.S. And then in the second half, he and his co-host Cody go over the story and discuss it and all that kind of stuff. And I really, really enjoy the podcast. So this was a very good book. Uh, I highly recommend that one. Uh, to update you on the other things I'm reading, I... Just finished on the weekend, I read I Who Have Never Known Men by Jacqueline Hartman. And I have a whole little weekend vlog that I did about that one that I'm going to post. And I'll put the link uh, in the corner for that one. I read it over the course of just one weekend when I was sick this past weekend. So I was in bed the whole time. So I read that one and I had to get it back to the library on Monday. So that was part of the, the impetus to read it so quickly because I had didn't realize that I wouldn't be able to renew it, that there were other people waiting for it. So, but I read that one, that one got four and a half stars from me and was super interesting. It was dystopian uh, fiction, something I've never, style I've never read before. It's very, very interesting, but I, I have a whole vlog about that. So you can talk, see that one. And then I am about 90% done the audiobook of Ready Player One. And I just have about 10% to finish on that one. I had had to send the audiobook back because I had run out of time. And then I just got it back here. So I'm going to be listening to the last 10% of that one. Uh, it's a reread for me because I had, um, it's a reread for me because I had read the actual physical book in the past and really enjoyed it. But it's narrated by Will Wheaton and it's, it's quite a, he's a really good narrator for that particular story. And the only problem is because I was binge listening to it when I knew I had to send it back. And uh, I ended up having a dream that night that was completely narrated by Will Wheaton. <laughs> so <laughs> that was kind of a funny, funny uh, aspect of that. But <laughs> so that's the audiobook that I'm still finishing. And then I am for my uh, BTS book club uh, prompt list. Uh, it was the one for February was a book that gives you all the feels. And so I've been reading Watership Down and just because of the amount of stuff I was reading in February and the how slow my reading has been going this this year, or I mean this March, I am still only, I'm on, I'm at fi about 50%. I'm on page 224 of this one. And this is a reread for me as well of one of my all-time favorite books. This is the 
one of my, yeah, it's, it's right up there. I, if, if somebody asked me what my, to pick like only two books that were my all time favorites, it would be this one and probably, um, to the hilt by Dick Francis. So those are the two that I usually go for when somebody says, you know, all time favorite books. So that's where I'm at with that one, making some progress going through it. And I think that's it for now. I have some more books coming in at the library. This is the March prompt for that is a book with found family. And so I have one coming in for that. And I'm going to draw some more from my jar to see what I read there. And so I will see you on my next video. Uh, let me know if you've read any of the books that I talked about. And what is your book that gives you all the feels? Because this one here, like I, I laugh, I, there's one part in it that I cry. I just love the characters and I get nervous for what's going to happen every time, even though I know what happens because I've read this like 10 times. And, <laughs> but as soon as I start reading again and get these characters into my head again, it just feels like going home. I just love it. So what is a book for you that gives you that feeling of going home as soon as you start reading it? So yeah, so let me know in the comments and uh, give the video a like and a subscribe that will help me start to reach more viewers and maybe make something out of this little booktube fun that I'm doing. So anyways, yeah, I hope you have a good week and I will see you on my next video. Bye.